Hello, so for this video, I'm going to talk about 10 things that I wish I knew before going into my Peru trip and my Salkantay trek trip. So first is don't book your excursions online. When you get to Peru, there's going to be tons of opportunity for you to shop around between different booking agencies or companies. When I was doing research online to do the dune buggy excursion, I was seeing maybe $50 per person. Sometimes I saw prices that as high as $120 per person. What we paid for the dune buggies and the sandboarding experience was $14 Canadian dollars. So if you're someone like me, you'd like to have everything booked before you even get there so everything is set up and organized, but you're gonna save so much money if you wait until you get to the place and book. That's actually one thing that I wish I did for our sock and tie trek. We booked it ahead of time. I think we paid around $500 to $600 Canadian. If you wait until you get to Cusco, uh, ask around, you can get it as low as $200 Canadian. So definitely book it when you get there. The second thing that I wish I knew was the tipping culture. So if you're someone like us who come from very big cities, for example, we come from Toronto, and if you eat at a restaurant in downtown Toronto, the norm is to tip 18 to 25% of your bill. Apparently with tourists, they tip maybe five to ten percent of their bill and locals don't even tip to be honest because everything the food and the drinks were just so much cheaper than we're used to we were definitely tipping as high as 30 percent or 35 percent of our bills i feel like if i had known that five to ten percent was the norm maybe i would have changed how i tipped when i was there so the third thing that i wish i knew is to wear sunscreen now, I've said it multiple times before, I really cannot stress it enough. M make sure you wear your sunscreen. I didn't realize because I've never been in that high of elevation before. When you're in high elevation, the sun gets more intense the higher you go. I really slacked on that. I had a pretty traumatic experience by getting um, sun blisters on my lips and it really looked like some kind of <laughs> STI, like I'm sorry. That is something that I wish I knew and I wish I worked harder to avoid. But yes, definitely wear some sunscreen, wear your hat, wear sunglasses, anything you can do to protect yourself from the sun because it gets really intense up in the mountains. So for the fourth thing is bring bug spray. I also mentioned this in a previous video. We really procrastinated on getting bug spray. I bought something cheap and it was a lotion that you squirt on your hand, you rub on yourself. Make sure you get something really high quality and something you can actually spray because you need to spray it on your clothes because those bugs will try to bite you through your thin clothes and it's gonna suck. But yes, bring bug spray. All right, and the fifth thing is the Salkantai trek is very hard. It sounds really silly because if you do your research online, the Inca Trail is labeled as moderate and the Salkantai trek is labeled as challenging. I feel like I would have been more prepared if it said more challenging, maybe I'm just being too needy. Just know that it's tough, especially if you've never been in that high of elevation before. If you think your fitness level can be better, definitely prepare for it because it's it's not an easy trek. It was really the hardest experience of my life. I also wish that we brought a camel pack or the hydration pack. Funny story is that Suroy actually wanted to bring his camel pack right before we left for the airport when we were leaving Toronto. And I told him, no, don't bring it. It's just gonna cause too much stress. Everything is packed already. We're just about to walk out the door. And I, I regretted it because really taking your water out during your trek, stopping and opening your bag, it all of it takes too much energy because you're getting much less oxygen than usual if you think about it water has oxygen so try to drink as much as you can don't even worry about peeing because like really though when we were hiking everyone peed wherever they wanted you can't wait until the next washroom you just gotta go when there's a big boulder or behind a tree somewhere. All right, so the sixth advice is acclimatization. We did research online and a lot of people say to spend at least two nights or two days 
in Cusco before doing the Salcantay trek. I believe Cusco is at 3,200 meters of elevation. The highest you're gonna go at the Salcantay Pass is around 4,900, I think. Something like that, I'll put it around here. We spent, I, th I think, three nights in Cusco just to make sure that we don't get f during the trek. We still did. If you can't afford the time and the resources, I would really recommend try to spend as much time as you can in Cusco. Like Cusco has so much to offer. There's so many different day excursions that you can take from there. And also like the people, the food are amazing. There's so much, so many things to see and to try. Spending more than two to three nights there will really help you out. Number seven is go with the Salkantai Trek over the Inca Trail. I feel like I'm biased because I went with the Salkantay Trek. It's beautiful, but the Salkantay Trek, from what I know, is just a much more scenic route. You go through Peru's highlands, you see the mountains, which are amazing. Another thing about the Inca Trail is apparently there's not much of a break when you're doing it. There's four days, which sounds like it should be easier than the Salkantay Trek, but apparently all it is is just up, down, up, down. The Salkantay Trek is kind of spread out in a way where I wanna say maybe level three on the, on the first day, level five on the second day, and then third day you have a rest. Fourth day, there is a hike that we actually didn't do, but um, that's also another kind of tough hike. And then the last day is the Machu Picchu day. So yeah, Sakantai Trek over Inca Trail. No offense. <laughs> Eighth advice is to go with a guide company. There are people who choose to do the Salkantai trek on their own. Just bring a, a map, a compass, and bring your own gear and do it on your own. I'm glad that I went with a guide company. Not only do they carry your bags with you, they also provide you with food and accommodation. Like for example, if you were getting sick from the elevation, they would have the resources to get you better and finish the trek or if there was an emergency, at least you know that there's someone looking out and will be able to get you out of wherever you are during that time. Number nine is there will be taxis. Now when I say taxis, this is for the most difficult parts of the trek. On the second day, I was able to pay 120 soles to take a horse all the way up to the Salkantai Pass. I was able to enjoy the trek so much more than I would have been if I didn't have the option of riding that horse. So another situation where you'll be able to take a taxi is on the fourth day. There is another hike that you can choose to partake in. I think there were four of us. We chose to pay, I think it was 20 soles each, but at least there are ways to get through it, you know? And 10 and last advice is make sure to bring pain medicine or elevation sickness medicine. We bought this supplement from Amazon that's supposed to help you with elevation, but I wish I brought something a little stronger that actually was medicine. If you can't find it, make sure to bring some because if you're anything like me, I needed all the help that I can get. Soroy had a fever, our bodies were hurting because we've never hiked for multiple days before. So make sure to bring those. So those are my tips and advice for your own trip to Peru or your own Salkantai trek. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a like and a comment if you have any questions or if you have your own experience of going to the Machu Picchu, please let me know in the comments. If you like more videos like this, please subscribe and I will see you later. Okay, bye.